became a reminder every time I passed this bridge during the season that those I carried in my heart were remembered. That tree is here again, and I know some of you have already placed names on that tree, and you're welcome to do that after our time together. And we'll receive those names as they're placed on the tree that's placed here in honor and in memory of Will. And how important for our community that we take these moments to gather together and to remember. As we gather here this evening to remember, we're remembering another person who has touched this community, Scott Tharp. You know, every Sunday, Scott led songs at the Baird Billion Methodist Church, that old stone church. He would arrive at church early on Sunday and he would grab the bulletin and look at what we were going to be talking about in the scriptures. And he would go through his songs and choose two or three to sing and get the transparencies ready. Yes, we use transparencies on an overhead. We're so technolo technologically savvy there. And we use that to display the words, and I would sometimes have to stop by the church and pick up something before I go down the road to Monumental. And when I would enter the back door, I would hear Scott singing. And your voice can really fill up that sanctuary area of the church. And he would just be singing. It was a wonderful way to connect. And I would try to jump in and add into the songs wherever we were before I went on to my day. Scott loved music. He loved playing the piano. He loved singing. He would often encourage our congregation to sing with gusto. And he tried to get us to sing <laughs> a little more with gusto than what we had. This time of year, on one of the Sundays in December, I could always count on Scott to pick a particular Christmas carol away in the manger. And he would have us sing first. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus lay down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. And then he would have us sing. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus lay down his sweet head. The stars in the bright sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. And then, and we're not going to do this tonight, anyone here from the church who's holding your breath, he would try to get us to sing them at the same time. <laughs> we failed miserably. <laughs> but every year he would try to get us to do that. And, and every year I could count on the fact that Scott would make sure that we sang that carol. We could count on Scott to try to try his best to raise our Christmas spirits, to sing Christmas songs. He would inspire us with festive holiday ties. He had enough for every Sunday in a year to have been Christmas Sunday, I'm sure. I didn't count them to him, but I know he has a lot of those. Um, in the last Christmas season that we had in the sanctuary, we had a festive sweater Sunday. Now that's what we call ugly sweater Sunday because my daughter informed me that some of those ugly sweaters that someone might think they're festive. So uh, we need to call them festive. So we had festive sweater Sunday. And so Scott arrived that Sunday, not wearing a sweater. He just didn't do a festive sweater. No, he wore a red shirt. He had on a tie and had a repeating pattern of Snoopy wearing a Santa Claus hat and Woodstocks following along behind him. He was wearing a suit jacket, and not just any suit jacket. It was black trimmed and red with sweater patterns of white presents, green Christmas trees, and the words written in red, which was a quote from the movie Home Alone, Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. <laughs> <laughs> you meant that, baby. <laughs> Not only for the suit jacket, but for the way with style, Scott in that jacket led songs and joined in the fun. What I learned from Scott, when you celebrate, go all out. When you sing, sing with gusto. When you serve, don't make it look like work. Do it in such a way that only later folks realize your service. 
When you cheer for your favorite team, cheer loudly and offer words of suggestions from where you are. And when you play basketball, you play to win. What I learned from Scott, when you live in a community, you commit to that community. Be an active participant in making that community home for you and others. If you see something that needs done, then do it. If you see a need, get done what you can get done. If you commit to your faith, then share that in a way that is yours to share. For Scott, it was teaching and singing and serving. And if you want your community to be home, then you make it home. Scott loved Barrickville. He made a commitment to this community. He was a son of an itinerant preacher in the Methodist Church, like Jim mentioned, which means that his dad would move every so many years and go to another location. And so I think it was when he was nine, Jim, that he moved here and Barrickville became home for Scott. The Old Stone Church became a place where him and his family and his friends could grow. He loved the history of Barrickville and he made it a priority to know that history and to share it with others. So today we stand here in a covered bridge, a Barrickville landmark in the midst of Christmas lights. And in this moment, we remember Scott. I hope this moment is more than just a remembrance. Barrickville still needs folks to make, make this community a priority. Barrickville still needs the story keepers of our history. The world still needs folks to make passionate commitments to their life of faith and connection and service. And as we experience the light that shines in the darkness, may we commit to let our lives shine in the darker places of this world. Scott would remind us to do that, but to do it with a smile and do it with some joy. Thank you.